So the other day I was outside early in the morning and I found this huge insect and I immediately thought I just have to do a video on this. So even though this insect doesn't really have much of anything to do directly with crop production or gardening or anything like that, it is a really awesome insect that more people should know more about, especially because the presence of this insect can be an indication of higher water quality and less pollution. And if your farm or garden happens to be very close to a prominent black fly habitat, this can also be a very good insect to know. The Dobson fly is a relatively very large insect, right? It can measure out to be three to four inches long, and this is when its wings are folded across its back. And the wings are intensely veined, right? It kind of looks kind of like some ornate stained glass. This insect also has some very prominent pinchers, also called mandibles. Uh, and I mean, these pinchers are super prominent, and the males will typically have larger pinchers than the females will. These insects will also have long uh, and thin antenna stemming out from above the eyes. And then of course, when the wings are spread out and splayed out from the body, uh, the, that wingspan can measure to six to seven inches long. This insect is more often than not going to be nocturnal, right? So we as humans might not see this insect very often, but sometimes artificial lighting like street lights or porch lights or things of that nature can attract these insects into the area. Now this insect is uh, primarily a predatory insect and typically it's only the larva of the Dobson fly that will actually feed while the adults only live for like a few days or a week or a little bit more than a week uh, in most cases. The females may pollinate some flowers eating some of the nectar, but basically these adult Dobson flies don't really feed on anything. And also the larvae of the Dobson fly are usually called helgramets or toe biters. And while we're on the topic of toe biters, I'm just gonna take a quick detour and mention that these insects in their larval stage or even adult stage can bite humans, but they're not going to actively go after humans. They will only bite if they're mishandled or feel seriously threatened. But even so, the bite is not regarded as harmful or you know venomous or anything like that. And these stops and flies, as I said, they are pretty docile. So the benefits of the dobs and fly, of course, occur mostly in the larval stages, right? This is when they're uh, in that predatory stage and they're going after some of these other insects. Prominent among the um, prey insects are the black flies, right? Black flies get a pretty bad rap uh, by a lot of humans uh, and for very good reasons. Their buzzing can be pretty annoying and uh, their bites can be pretty painful. Not all species of black flies bite humans, but some of them do. But the presence of the black flies, as painful or annoying as they may be, they are actually also a good indicator of good environmental health and good water quality as well. But yeah, the larva of the Dobson fly will go after the larva of the black fly. Uh, it will also go after the larva of the mayfly will go after the caddis fly, certain types of worms as well, um, the stone fly. And again, I have the stone fly asterisk here because uh, the stone fly can also be a good indicator of high water quality and good in environmental health. So if you see all three of these species, depending of course on the climate in which you live, uh, if you see all three of these species, it can be a pretty good uh, indication that your local ecology is in a pretty good spot and a lot of your water might not necessarily be as heavily contaminated. And so the Dobson fly larvae, of course, are generalist predators, right? So they're not just going to go after a specific type of uh, insect, but they will go after a pretty broad spectrum, right? So this is not an extensive list of insects that they go after, but it just kind of gives us a start. You know, there's so much more experimentation uh, or observation that can be done. So certain aspects on the landscape will make the Dobson fly 
a lot more likely to set up its home in your area. So generally these Dobson flies will be near water sources, especially fast flowing streams or rivers, uh, things of that nature. And the adults will also lay their eggs near those bodies of water. So they may lay them on branches like of different shrubs or trees or on other natural features like large boulders, rocks, those kinds of things. And then these insects will also pupate, right? They that's where they go from being a larva to an adult. So, so that like in between phase, they will need wet soil, right? So like near uh, river banks or stream banks, and then also having rotting wood uh, in the area can also provide a good habitat for them to pupate. All right, so thank you so much for checking out this video on the Dobson fly. It is a very spectacular looking insect and a little intimidating too. But overall, this can be a pretty solid beneficial insect to have around. And it can also be an indicator species of higher ecological function. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.